Good afternoon, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Last week, I saw a patient with a proximal fifth metatarsal fracture, and I would like to discuss this fracture with you today. So I got a patient like a 32-year-old male who was uh, actually playing some football, and he suddenly had a plantar flexion. So there was a sudden inversion while he kept his ankle in plantar flexion and suddenly he developed pain at the base of the fifth metatarsal bone and he came to my clinic. So you see when you hear the story of this patient something should come to your mind. Probably he has a fracture and his story is classic was playing baseball and then his ankle was in plantar flexion position and he had a sudden inversion and developed sudden pain at the base of the fifth metatarsal. And that's the classic history for fifth metatarsal fracture. And this fracture is a very common thing for primary care physicians like myself. Back in 1902, Dr. Robert Jones gave a classification that we still follow for this fracture. There are two things, there are two types, type A and type B. In type A, it is tuberosity avulsion fracture. That means the, tub the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal has fractured. So that is tuberosity avulsion fracture. And type B, the fracture, the proximal metatarsal fracture within 1.5 centimeters of tuberosity that is type B. In type B there are two different types acute Jones fracture and stress fracture. Acute Jones fracture is again three types type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1 is early union, type 2 is delaying, delayed union, type 3 is non-union. So in type B there is acute Jones fracture and in acute Jones fracture there are three types again early, delayed and non-union. The same way stress fracture there are three types of stress fracture type 1, type 2, type 3. Type 1 is early, type 2 is delayed, type 3 is non-union. So that's a basic classification and it's very easy to remember. All you got to do is to remember the anatomy, the bone, the fifth metatarsal, there is a tuberosity at the proximal end of the bone and if something, the fracture goes through the tuberosity, we call it tuberosity avulsion fracture and if the fracture goes 1.5 centimeters from the tuberosity, we call it proximal metatarsal fracture within 1.5 centimeters of the tuberosity and we subclassified it as acute Jones fracture and stress fracture. And again, we subclassified acute joint fracture into type 1, type 2, type 3, and stress fracture into type 1, type 2, type 3. Now, I'm going to show you the x-ray I took of this patient. And if you see this x-ray, things will become very, very clear. After I show you the x-ray, I will talk about how to treat this patient. Thank you. So you can see here, the first metatarsal is here. And then... This is the second metatarsal, third, fourth, and fifth. So patient is complaining pain here. So let us go to that area. So this is the fifth metatarsal. And if you come and take a look at it, close look at it. If you take a close look. So there is a fracture going right here see that let me show you with the marker so there is a fracture going right here it is little bit angulated little bit displaced but the proximal fragment and the distal fragment they're almost proximate with each other so this is going through the tuberosity here so it's like you can say this is a tuberosity avulsion fracture of the fifth metatarsal. Remember that the tuberosity avulsion fracture of the fifth metatarsal. Let me show you a 
uh, different view here. In this, you can actually see. You see. You see this. Uh, this is the calcaneus here. The calcaneus is fine, and uh, then here the navicular. Then you got the cuneiforms. So you can't see the fifth metatarsal because this is a medial view. And let's go to other view. Yeah, you can see this view. Let me a little bit magnify here. And uh, here if you can see, this is the closest I can get, but it is very, very clear here. And the fracture is going right through this. See? Right through this. So this is a classic proximal fifth metatarsal fracture and uh, the x-rays are all the things you need to make this diagnosis. The rest of the bones are normal. All the other metatarsals are normal. You got uh, cuneiforms, you got uh, cuboid and then you got uh, navicular, then you got uh, talus then behind it all this is calcaneus. They are all normal. So hope you got the idea of what uh, a fifth metatarsal fracture looks like from here. You see the point is if it goes through this, the tuberosity, that's called evolution tuberosity fracture. But if it goes like it, the part B is like the fracture within 1.5 centimeters from the tuberosity. That means from here 1.5 centimeters this distance if it is within this and again then it is classified as two different types acute Jones fracture and uh, stress fracture acute Jones fracture is classified again into three types type 1 type 2 type 3 and uh, stress fracture is classified into type 1 type 2 type 3 and uh, so that's about the fracture uh, uh, recognizing fracture on the uh, x-ray so that is the uh, fifth metatarsal fracture, the proximal fifth metatarsal fracture. So how do you treat them? Again, go by the classification. The first one, tuberosity evolution fracture. If the fragments, if they are displaced, then they should go to an orthopedic specialist. If they are not displaced, I mean they are just staying there there is no displacement, no angulation, then all you got to do is to give them either an ankle splint or a short walking, a short leg walking cast or nowadays we got like walking cast boots so you can, you, you can give even cast boots then you go to type B, first one acute Jones fracture, type 1, type 2, type 3 again the same thing, type 1, type 2, usually you can try that short leg walking cast, a non weight bearing short leg walking cast. But type 3, that is like a non union. Certainly, type 3, they need orthopedic consultation. Same with stress fracture. Type 1, type 2, you can try like a, 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 an ankle splint or a short leg walking cast or walking cast boots. But for type 3, when there is a non union, even type 2, which is delayed union based on patient's preferences you can send them to an orthopedic consultant, consultant. but the point here is like uh, you do conservative treatment when there is no angulation not much displacement when the fracture pieces are together then you go by conservative treatment whenever they are a little bit angulation little bit displacement that you don't think could be corrected by conservative treatment, then you need to send them to orthopedic surgeon where they are treated by either open reduction internal fixation or closer reduction with pinning. So those are the treatments they can get from the orthopedic consultation when it is like a delayed non-union. Okay, so those are the most important points I wanted to share with you about fifth metatarsal fracture today. Thank you very much.